Okay, testing, testing. Ichini Sansei. <laughs> Sansei Seafood Restaurant and Sushi Bar was first started in 1996 in Kapalua, Maui. My sister thought about the name Sansei Seafood Restaurant and Sushi Bar because Sansei means third generation. And third generation, that's, that's who I am. My, my grandparents came from Japan, had my parents, and then they had me. So I'm third generation. So just like our food, it's um, Japanese based, but it's Americanized. So that's what kind of food you'll find in our restaurant. In fact, sometimes you won't even find Japanese based. It's just good food, okay? <laughs> so you've been here before, Sansei? All right, I know that guy has, Steakhouse. <laughs> he works with us at Steakhouse. Anyway, I couldn't do this all alone, okay? I, ha I have to work with some really awesome people that can take charge, that can really do the work and do it every day, okay? And I go and, you know, check some of the restaurants, have dinner with, at the restaurants, but these guys really do a lot of hard work. Let me introduce them to you right now. Our corporate chef, who is a graduate of the CIA in Hyde Park and who worked for Restaurants Unlimited, which is um, Kincaid's now, it used to be Horatio's, be Horatio's before, Ryan's, um, Palomino, uh, Cinnabon, a whole bunch of different restaurants. He was a corporate chef there and he came back to Hawaii and we were lucky enough to uh, have Garrett work with us. Garrett Cho. We have um, uh, an awesome, awesome um, sushi chef. He should be a head sushi chef by now, but uh, I think he moved from Kapalua to to Honolulu with his, uh, with his better half. <laughs> but um, Jason has, um, I tell you, he's, he's pretty awesome. Good work, work ethic, good attitude. I mean, just someone you want to work with and great knowledge and skills. Um, you find him at Waikiki, 
and he's one of our sushi chefs. I think he's, uh, he's almost a head sushi chef. <laughs> anyway, Jason. <laughs> And last but not le least, this gentleman has worked, has learned on the job, on the job at Sansei. And uh, he's my nephew. <laughs> you can tell by the height, right, similarities. <laughs> he's my nephew, his name is Rick Kodama. Okay, so today we are going to be doing just pretty much like an everyday, you know, sushi bar. We're gonna start with prepping, okay? We're gonna explain some of the ingredients to you, and then we're gonna start making some rolls, and we're gonna make some nigiri sushi and sashimi. Just gonna give you a little glimpse of what this is all about, okay? Um, so, guys, come on up. You know, I'm not gonna give you any lectures. I'm just gonna give you a demonstration, okay? But I do wanna give you this one lecture, okay? When I first started Sansei. It was um, 1996 and I was there every day, every night. I didn't even have a bed downstairs in the office, but I was there a lot. I was to get there eight o'clock, leave at three o'clock, you know, go sleep, come back, you know, and I didn't take a day off for over three years. I worked there every day. Um, Wednesdays, I came a little later because that was kind of my play day and it, I was in Maui and you know what I did? for my play day, I went to Costco. <laughs> went to Costco, looking for better prices, shopping. And it was fun, I loved it. You know, Costco just opened up, so it was, it was kind of a fun thing for me. And then I come back all re refreshed, ready to go for the next week. Um, but my lecture is this, okay? If you look at the guys I'm surrounded by, okay, our staff like that in all of our restaurants are very similar to these guys. Um, and they possess one thing, okay? They possess great attitudes, great work ethic, and we're always helping each other out. It's a teamwork kind of deal. If you look at any, if you go to sushi bars, try to notice that. How many guys are working together? When I first started sushi business, it was, okay, I got my section, I got my customers, and I'm not gonna help anybody else out. Now, we changed all that, and we're helping everybody out. Hey, what do you got? What can I do for you? and we're just working together as a team. I remember this one sushi bar I worked at. I was here, head chef was there, and on this side was this guy named Dai. And he just not, did not want to work. He did not want to help us out. You know, after a while, I just got really tired of this, and it was like really frustrating. I never befriended him. I never, you know, went out drinking with him because it's hard to, hard to respect, hard to be with that kind of person. You're working hard and this guy's slacking off, okay? That's why my advice to you guys, whenever you go into a restaurant or any kind of job, work hard, get a good attitude, and always ask, what can I do, okay? And look for things to do, okay? Attitude is really important in, in the restaurant business. If you are like, man, I don't wanna be here, you know, I got this, I got that, you know, it's like, who wants to be by you? Who wants to work with you? No one. Who wants to hire you? No one. <laughs> so we look for that in um, new employees. You know, what kind of attitude you got, okay? So that's the lecture. <laughs> Hopefully you can take that to heart. Um, when we go into the restaurant, the first thing we do, okay, is we wash, or we cook the rice. And after we cook the rice, then we cut the rice. We cut the rice with a sous. Now, Jason's gonna show you how, how to make a soup. It's real simple. You get recipes for that, and this soup will keep for six months to a year. You don't have to make this much, but just make a little bit, you know, and just keep it in your pantry. Anyway, we have salt, sugar, and rice wine vinegar, and kombu, okay? And you have the recipes, and all you do is combine it and let it sit, okay? Real simple, that's a soup. A lot of people, especially in Hawaii, they have different recipes for this because local style says, um, I don't want to use shoyu, I don't want to use soy with that, okay? So it has to be a little sweeter, it has to be a little wetter. So they, everybody changes their recipes according to their own taste. Because the rice is, is important, but you know what, that's not the star of our whole 
you know, sushi. It's the, to the nigiri topping or it's what's inside the roll. That's a star, you know, and a nice balance. So what we do is when we, when we um, add this to the rice, we use only 10% of the solution for, to, the, um, to the rice. That way you don't taste a lot of vinegar, a lot of sugar, a lot of salt. You taste the rice as well, okay? And of course the rice is important. We always shop around for rice. And do you guys know that every year there's a new crop coming in? And when you get a new crop of rice coming in, what happens? It's not as dry as last year's crop, okay? So it's a little wetter. So you have to use a, lot, a little less water so that it becomes a certain kind of consistent, consistency texture you want, okay? Rick is gonna show you how to cut the rice. Um, do you have a mic? Can we get a mic for him? <laughs> Any questions so far? Okay, so these are the basics. Um, in Japan, someone will take, go ahead, put it in. Okay, someone new would get trained three years on rice making. Okay, when they first start, um, they got to make the rice about three or four times before they even get it right. And they're always getting whacked because it's not right. <laughs> it's really hard to, to make sushi in Japan. You guys saw that, um, that movie Jiro? Look at his two sons. His two sons are like, what, 60, 60 years old? And then, you know, they're still not the head chef. You know, because, um, well, one guy is because he went off on his own. But the other guy is still working for the dad. And the dad doesn't want to retire, so he's second chef. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Anyway, Rick's going to explain to you what he does. Huh? Okay. Hi. Um, so what we do, take it. Um, so we take it out of the um, rice cooker. Put it in this kind of hangiri rice paddle. And um, try to break it up a little bit. Our corporate sushi chef said, when you're breaking up, never do this because that's the action of cutting and we break down the rice. So you always want to do a north and south type of, just a slight break. You kind of even it out. And then, uh, like chef said, 10% of the rice. And when you spread, you kind of want to do it as evenly as possible. Um, until the next stage. Ideally, you want to get every kernel with the same amount of vinegar solution, the su, every kernel. But that's almost impossible to do. So we have to do it kind of bulk and just do it like this. So we use a paddle to kind of spread out the vinegar so it just go, doesn't go right down to the bottom. So what he'll do is they call cut the rice. He'll cut the rice, mix it all in, let it sit, and then maybe 10, 15 minutes later on, we'll come and flip it. Okay, you don't want to work the rice too much because if you do, it becomes like uh, a little pasty. Okay, so he'll do that and that's it. Jason, okay, what we're going to do now is make, um, cut the cucumber and cut avocado. Very simple, but it's got to be done. The cucumbers, we like to use Japanese cucumbers as much as possible. Okay, if you can't find Japanese cucumbers, we can use the hothouse English cucumbers, but with that, what happens is the seeds are bigger, so we have to kind of de-seed it as well. With a Japanese cucumber, it's real simple, and you can eat the whole thing. So we cut the ends off, and then we figure out, this is, this is what we do at the sushi bar. We cut it so that it'll fit in this roll. So basically, that's what he's got. That's why we cut a certain size, okay? And from there you cut it in half, then you cut it in uh, pieces, and you end up like, yeah, you end up like this, okay? Just some um, cucumber sticks, all right? Real simple, right? Avocado, next. <laughs> Basic avocado, we like to use a Haas avocado. Okay. And this prep work we do every day. We do about a case of avocados. We do, um, I don't know how many pounds, but we do a ton of these cucumbers. We make wasabi, we do the crab mix, we do the spicy tuna mix. Okay, any questions? 
Okay, so anyway, avocado cuttings, real simple. And avocados are so perfect, you know, that you can just peel it like that, skin. And we go through so many avocados. And the, the company that we get it from, they know exactly how ripe we want it, okay? If they give us to it green, we're not gonna hold it for, you know, four or five days, because we use so many avocados per day and, uh, you know, a couple cases a day. So, you guys saw that, it's pretty simple, huh? <laughs> okay, all right, now we're gonna make uh, our crab mixture and our spicy tuna mixture. Okay. The crab mixture, we use imitation crab and we use blue crab, okay? Ideally, you wanna use the best crab you can, um, but right, you know, we have to think of economics and what tastes, tastes good. So this is our, what we came out with as far as what tastes good. So we use blue crab, half blue crab, half um, uh, imitation crab with some mayonnaise and we, we mix it into a certain texture. Ideally, maybe you wanna use king crab if you do it at home for yourself. You know, maybe Dungeness, whatever kind of crab you want. So, and whatever kind of crab you can afford. Some places use pure um, fake crab. What do they call that, surumi? Yeah, something like that, it's like, you know, fish cake. So, well he's gonna be doing that and we use, usually mix it with our hands to get the right texture. I'm not sure what he's gonna do, whether he's got gloves or hands. <laughs> Okay, and then Jason is gonna make our spice tuna mix. It's almost like a pokey mix with spice. It goes in the rolls. You know, the uh, this basic crab mix has become a workhorse in most Americanized sushi rolls, the California sushi roll, and the variations off of that. So this is one of your most basic prep filling ingredients for a sushi roll. You want to put enough mayonnaise just to bind it and not make it so heavy that uh, and, and soft that when you start to form the sushi, it starts to squeeze up the side. So just enough mayonnaise to, to moisten. Absolutely, I wouldn't scrimp off. There's such a few ingredients in here, you, need, you always buy the best. It really, it really matters. She asks for a type of mail, you know, and uh, <laughs> if you can, best foods, you know, best foods does a good job. It's very, it's something that we know and something that we enjoy the flavor. The crab makes a difference. Um, you know, everything in the roll, everything makes a difference. The type of tuna you get the kind of salmon you get. I mean, you want to eat the best quality stuff you can because it'll kind of excite you, excite your palate, and excite your creativity as well. So, that's our crab mixture. And he's right, it's a workhorse. We use that in most of our rolls, and we're gonna make a roll today called the California roll. You've made those before, right? Or you had those before. Cucumber, crab, avocado. Very simple. Spicy tuna mix, okay? After we get the big tuna, we cut it into blocks for a sushi sashimi. We have this leftover real close to skin, so we scrape it off. And what do we do with it? We make spicy tuna, okay? So basically he's got scraped off tuna, and then he's gonna add to that um, just a little bit of salt. This is what the locals, the locals, they don't really dip it in soy, okay? I'll show you wasabi. They just pick it up and they eat it. If you go to parties, that's all they do because of all the sushi that they get. You see those black round ones with the, uh, what do you call those type of sushi? Maki sushi? Yeah, and then, you know, it's already sweet. They just pop it in the mouth and eat it, walk away. You know, but the California rolls at the sushi bars, you know, you, I think you need a little bit of salt or soy. But so we add a little salt in there. And also this is masago. 
There's Tobiko, there's Masago. Masago smelt roll is a little sweeter than Tobiko. You can't tell it by itself, but what, when you put it side by side, you're like, wow, what a difference. Okay, the um, Tobiko is more, trend, more, more clearer and it has a bigger pop. This one here is sweeter and it, it's really nice for, you know, like this kind of roll. Okay, with that, we put a Masago, Masago mayo in that as well. And basically just mayo and masago to get the right color. And this will last a long time. Then we have sesame oil. And it's just like making your own pokey. Okay. And then green onions. And of course, um, you can use any type of heat. We choose uh, sriracha. Okay, you can use sambal. You can use, I think the Japanese has this oro momiji, which is a little spicy as well. Okay, I like a little more mayo on this one, so I'm gonna put more mayo. Okay, that's why I'm like this, and that's why he's like that. <laughs> but, okay, go. Okay, what he'll do is mix it, we'll taste it, and see if it's just right. And then we can start doing, doing some rolls or doing some nigiris. I didn't put too much, did I? <laughs> Okay, all this prep work, it's Japanese call it shikomi, and if you're at the sushi bar, the cucumbers, avocados, the rice goes to the, you know, starting person, the fish cutting, um, and all the more del delicate stuff, that's to the more senior guys. Okay, why? I don't know, <laughs> but that's what it is. See, that's looking good like that. I like that. So, of course, you should try and taste it as you go. Wow. That's good. That's good. You could probably put a little bit more spice. You guys like spice, right? <laughs> okay. I think that'd be good. <laughs> it's not that spicy, trust me. <laughs> okay. Now, we would be ready to make rolls, except we're just going to give you a little, you know, a little fish cutting demonstration. Okay. Um, we have display cases at the sushi bar, okay? They're only so, so long, so wide. So when we cut our fish, we have to get our fish so it can fit in there, okay? So that's why we have certain techniques that'll make it fit, okay? We're gonna show you how to do a, how we cut our ahi and how we cut our hamachi. We also brought some salmon, so we're gonna show you the nigiri. And a lot of people do it differently. Um, when I first started, it was the hardest thing to do, the nigiri sushi. And I'm not gonna make any of you do that, okay? Because it takes a lot of practice. I mean, when I went into the sushi bar, I was like the man, I knew what I was doing, right? I, I, could, I could do anything. But then when I started making nigiri sushi, it was so humbling because I see this one guy, he was making it so fast, and I could not even make one. Mine would fall apart. Mine was, you know, just didn't look good. It was, in, it was inconsistent. One was big, one was small. You know, it was terrible. <laughs> and I uh, kind of get self-conscious about that. So anyway, I had to practice and practice. And, you know, maybe three months to about a year, I started getting better at it. And it was very humbling making uh, nigiri sushi. You can make the rolls. You can get the um, press blocks, put the rice in there, press it like that. You can do any kind of thing you want to, you know, especially if you're just eating it. <laughs> so, okay, so anyway, um, where's the tuna? Let's get the tuna out. We order number one, number two tuna, depends on the price, depends on the quality, and we let our purveyors, okay, pick it for us. If we don't like it, if, if there's something wrong with it, we'll just tell them, take it back. And they will take it back. And then we'll just, you know, it's, it's, it's good for them to give us the best product they can possibly get. Why? Because we'll keep doing business with them. If they constantly give us really mediocre quality product, then you know what? We're just gonna switch to another company and they're gonna lose sales. We go through so much tuna, it's incredible. I mean, Kapalua store, 
what do we go through? About four or five of these a night, maybe more? Yeah? I mean, that's a night. So imagine a week, imagine a month, imagine a whole year. Okay? So we ask for it. Take the head off and take the tail off. Because the suji, all the um, senior part, from the top, it goes like this all the way to the bottom. And at the tail, it just bunches up. So when you eat the tail, there's a lot of suji there, okay? And it's not good for sashimi, not good for sushi, so we end up scraping it, which is kind of a waste if, we, if we're spending $10 a pound for that. We want the best possible pieces. Okay, so. so some people might not be familiar with what suji means. Suji, that's a sinew. Okay, string, yeah, stringy tendon in the, in the fish. Everybody know that? Okay, so if I look at my block like this, right? And I look at my case, we use a knife like this, okay? Kind of figure out, okay, it's that deep. Okay, so we kind of mark it here, here, and here. Look at that, that's perfect. So what we do is we kind of just cut it right down the center. Okay. Yeah, see, it's, it's like meat, okay? You can take that away. Um, if you let it sit in its own juices, it'll spoil faster. So we like to wrap it with some kind of cloth, and they have all kinds of absorbent cloths for it. These guys just use paper towels, but there's so many absorbent cloths. You don't want to take too much blood out of it because if you do, it'll become just totally dry. So if you, if you store it for, you know, four or five days to a week, it's not going to be as good as, say, when you first get it. Okay? So, that's tuna like that. We'll cut out the blood and you see this part here? We'll take it away from this and sometimes we can V this and use that for sashimi. But you want to get the most the most out of this as possible. So, what I'll do is I'll take the bloodline out. You guys enjoy the bloodline? Yeah? Some people do, you know. I saw this one guy back in Maui, and I cut it off, you know, and he just take it and eat it. Sometimes put tomatoes and onions with it, you know, and that's the, the real Hawaiian way. I mean, don't let anything go to waste. Um, if you notice, okay, I'm not sawing. Okay, I'm just doing one slice because it really shows on the fish. Okay, so that part there, the guy love it. This is a meal. <laughs> and you can actually eat that. Okay, so next part, I will take this away from this. Oops. Okay, and we, we can V this as well, use this part, and the rest of the part will scrape and make spicy tuna. Okay? So, when we got this part here, what do we do? We have to figure out how to do it. So we get our knife, figure out, okay, that's the bottom, and that's it, okay? Then we draw lines this way to cut the blocks, okay? So basically, I've got that. I'll take the top off, okay? And that can be used for sushi, sashimi, and same thing with this. This is all prime cuts, okay? Okay, and same thing with this. Now we just cut blocks from here. Okay, and that's how you get your blocks. And what do you do with your blocks now? Now this is the, I guess this is the part that, you know, it 
took me a little while, but when I make sushi, I have to cut against the grain, okay? So if you see the grains going this way, I'm gonna cut it this way for my sushi. Then I'll flip it this way, and this will be sashimi, okay? So it takes a little while to actually see that, okay? But I'm gonna make uh, sushi and sashimi for you, okay? In fact, Jason, where's Jason? Here's Jason. Okay, I'm gonna cut it. And it's not cut it, saw it, okay? There's a lot, of, a lot of technique to, you know, I've learned over the years, a lot of technique in how to cut it, okay? One cut is like this, okay? Nothing. Now, if I cut it like this, and then I flip my knife this way, straight, and then cut it here, then you can see a little ridge that I got. Can you see that? Little ridge. Okay, so this way, when I make my sushi, like that, it'll look, it, it'll look a lot thicker. Okay, there you go, Jace. He'll make the sushi for you. And then the sashimi, you turn it up on the other side and just, Okay, so what, my knife just glides through it, why? Okay, one, good tuna, two, sharp knife. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so combination of a couple things. All right, now to make the sashimi dish, okay, we're gonna use a little bit of this, uh, we call it suma, beet and radish. Okay, and we'll get some shiso. Everybody know what shiso is? Yeah? Shiso is uh, known as a perilla leaf, beefsteak leaf. Not like beefsteak tomato, a beefsteak leaf. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put a sashimi this way. What we do too is, um, if you look at this tuna, it's, it's kind of dull, dull red, right? But you let, we, we cut it, pre-cut it, and it'll bloom. It'll bloom into just nice bright red, the, the ones you look for. So that is, that is the sashimi. Very simple. Okay. Hey, Rick. Okay. Next. Let's do the hamachi. Hamachi is like a lot of other fishes. Um, opaka, onaga, um, what other kind of fishes? You know, so it's very similar how you cut that versus, versus like um, halibut. Halibut's a different style of cutting. Um, there's some other fishes as well, but ba this is a basic cut. We get it head off, tail off, and gutted, okay? So, got it? So it's a very simple way to cut it, but you wanna cut it so you get less meat on the bone, as much meat as possible on this, okay? So what we do is take out the napkin, <laughs> okay? Ready? It's real simple. Okay, we'll cut this side, turn it over, cut that side, and just take it off. Okay, so first of all, we'll take, take out this collar. You guys ever had hamachi kama, the collar? That's what this is right here. We take it off, we try to get as lean as possible. Okay. Then we mark an X here. Then we're ready to grill, broil, or whatever. Okay, that's a collar. We take that off. Then we slide right above the bone here. You don't want to pick it up and bend the meat because it can break the meat. 
So it's kind of like done by feel after a while. And if you were up here close by, you can see my knife going on the bone. Okay, if you're up here. But you're not, so you got to take my word for it. <laughs> and you don't have to scale this because they're really small scales. This is the first samachi I've done in um, how many years? But it's like riding a bike, okay? And you get to fish and you kind of get to know it. So you kind of press this way on it, okay? Opens it up a little and you can take a look at what, it, what we got here. And then, okay? And it should come off right like that. Okay, real simple. And now here, what you do is you scrape it off like this, okay, and you can make negihama, or you can make spicy hamachi, all right? So, tail, head, all you do is you cut it along the bloodline Okay, and this is the belly part. You take the bone off and the belly part. The belly part, it's got a lot of fat on it. Okay, and these, this is what we save for our special customers. <laughs> okay, and this part here isn't bad at all. You know, nice loin like that. So what I'll do is I'll clean it up a little bit. Okay, because the blood's not bad, you know. In fact, it's kind of good to have this blood here because you can see how fresh it is. After it's been open to oxygen, what, what would happen is um, it'll turn brown. So sometimes you go to the store, you see this um, brown hamachi blood, right? Okay, this part's no good. Okay, then you end up with a nice piece ready to use. Okay, now see again, measure our case. Okay, so the case would be here. So we would cut it here. Um, that's pretty much how we would do it. But take it off the skin, hold that, and just move the, move the skin like that. And it comes right off. Okay, now sometimes people cut this like this, and this is really tender part here. Okay, and you can use it for nigiri or sashimi. Okay, or yeah, either one. So I'll cut it here, okay. Okay, and there it is. Three pieces for Jason to uh, make sushi from. Okay, so that's that. And sashimi, you would do it this way. Okay, and there we go. We got hamachi sashimi now. 
All right, real simple. <laughs> Where's that salmon? Okay, now salmon is a, uh, I love salmon, salmon's great, but because it's born in fresh water, goes out to the ocean, and it comes back to fresh water, you can't really eat it um, fresh, raw, okay? What you need to do is you need to kill whatever is in there, the parasites, the bacteria, and so what we do is we freeze it. We cut it to a certain portion, then we freeze it. We salt it, then we throw it some vinegar, and then we freeze it. It'll kill everything. And a salmon, because it's so fatty, it'll, it won't change. Look at this color of this salmon. It's so beautiful. Okay? So, I'm just gonna cut some pieces here. Excuse me? How long do we freeze it for? How long do we freeze it for? We go through so much, so um, we don't freeze it for that long. We have maybe, what, a four day supply, five day supply? Yeah? Boy, look at that salmon. I think I like salmon sometimes better than the, um, better than, uh, what is that? Better than uh, hamachi because it's, it's so much flavor, it's incredible. Okay, is a, this is usually a really good combination, tuna, yellowtail, salmon. Okay, so that was pretty easy on the salmon, right? <laughs> okay, so that's sashimi, okay? And that's kind of a real quick, quick course on how to cut fish. There you go. Okay, now the nigiri portion of it, okay? This is definitely like riding a bike. You want to dip your fingers in lightly in the water, okay? You can shake it off like this. If it's too wet, what will happen is the water is going onto the rice and the rice is getting real watery and just kind of break apart. There is a sushi bar that does a special type of nigiri. He uses hot rice. And when he does the nigiri, he does it real quick and he puts it on your plate and you're supposed to pick it up and eat it, usually with your fingers, and it's still warm and it just falls right apart. That's called Sushi Sasabune on King Street. Anybody been there? Yeah, it's, um, it's not cheap and he's not that friendly. <laughs> no, it's not all shoyu wasabi. Um, in fact, when you go to Japan Sushi Bar, any kind of really high-end sushi bar, they will put the sauce on it for you. In fact, it's, it's sacrilege to put wasabi in your shoyu in Japan. You don't want to do that, and they'll frown at you. In fact, they might even kick you out, okay? Because all you want to do is you want to get the fish, you want to dip the fish side, the nigiri like that, you want to dip the fish side in, and then you eat it in one bite. Okay, not like what we do is show you wasabi and you dunk it in there and you take a bite, you dunk it in again, and you take another bite. No, that's not how you do it in Japan. In Hawaii, in the mainland, you know, my whole philosophy, do what you want to do. Okay, but you go to a place like Sasabune, he'll kick you up. Yeah, I know a lot of guys who won't ne will ne never go back there because they embarrass that person and they kick them out. So, some of the things like unagi, you have a sauce on it. The ahi, you have a special shoyu on it. Okay, they'll brush it. The wasabi is inside, they'll brush it and they'll put it down on your plate and you eat it like that. Some they have it with ponzu, some they have it with, you know, I can't think of anything else. I know there's some, some use ume paste, yeah. And there's a lot of different, different toppings on it. 
In fact, the sushi bars these days would show you different combinations, different sauces, different ingredients on top of the nigiri. Like a tuna nigiri, they can have a ginger scallion sauce, okay, which show you and then you eat it like that. And it tastes great. Yes. There is, there is. And if you go to like Marukai, if you go like Don Quixote, you get a small sampling of it. You go to Japan, oh, you go crazy. <laughs> and, but you know, you go crazy because there's so many and you don't know what it tastes like. You know, here you can buy some, take it home, and it's not cheap, but you take it home and, you know, try it, you know, with that. But, um, I guess I like salt. I like, I saw it. it's hard for me to use a green bottle. You know, the low sodium. It's hard for me to use Aloha Shoyu. Sorry, guys. <laughs> They're good guys, but it's hard for me to do that because I like the salt content of like Kikuman, Yama, Yamasa, stuff like that. Excuse me? You know, in Japan, there are variations, okay? of the variety of sushi are, is not California roll, spice tuna roll, rainbow roll, this kind of rolls. No, their variety are the different types of fishes. So you can have one bite of everything oh, and that's too much for you because they have that much variety. So they would have maybe like four or five white fish, they've had five clams, they've had different types of tuna, otoro, chutoro. Um, they, they would have so many different types a variety that you know you don't you can't eat eat you know one whole round of it okay they don't have california roll they don't have spiced tuna and these are more traditional type of sushi places of course there's other places where they do have spiced tuna they have california so it depends where you go yeah and usually the places where they don't have california roll your bill is going to become really high <laughs> But it's a good time to go because the dollar is strong. <laughs> Do you have a favorite, like, actually, we we don't bring it in from Japan. We actually um, get it from Nishimoto Trading Company, and they know our specs, so they, they look for the right rice for us. Okay, and it changes all the time. Okay, um, we're kind of a a bigger sushi bar, we go through a lot more rice than most, so it's, it's not easy. Yeah, if I was a small mom and pop type restaurant like the ones in Japan, they are so particular about their rice, they're so particular about their water they use, they're so particular about everything. They got a time to a science. They go 17 minutes cooked, 10 minutes to sit, and after that I put my sou on, and of course they have different kinds of ingredients for the sou. They get the kombu from a certain area. You know, they get the salt from a certain area. So it's very, very, um, they know their stuff. Yeah. Yes. Kohara. It's, it's very time consuming, but kohara, um, we don't have it. It's, um, I, we've done it a lot, but kohara is not something that everyone goes for. So it might sit there for two, three days, and after that, we gotta eat it. <laughs> so, and it's, for me, it's not one of the special things like kohara, you know? You've had it before? I've had it once. I just heard that it's really hard to work with. So. Yeah, because the fish is so small, you know? And you take one of them, and the, that whole side is one nigiri. <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's do some nigiris. Okay, tuna yellowtail salmon. Okay, Jason's gonna be doing one. And this one, it just took me a long time to practice. Do you, do you know how many uh, steps you use? Three to five. <laughs> okay, I got about six steps. Okay, and I'll show you what I do, okay? I get it here. I hold the fish like this, okay? We don't have any wasabi, so I grab my wasabi, put it here. I don't put it against my palm because my palm is warm, okay? So I get it here, put the wasabi down here, okay? Then I get the rice, 
I'll roll it into the ball, a certain ball, okay, and then I'll place it on here. See, I haven't made sushi in a long time, so it really sticks. He's made sushi uh, almost every night, so it's good. So I, what I do is I squeeze it, I put my finger in it, I'll turn it upside down, and I'll slowly brush it like this, but I'll form it this way, and then I'll put two fingers there, forming it this way as well, and then I'll turn it around and do the same thing. Okay, and that's my sushi. It should, the bottom should be looking like a boat. What do they call that? Um, battleship? Gunkan, a gunkan, so it's like a battleship. The sides come in like this and the bottom like that. Okay, so that's one piece. Go ahead, make a couple more. Tuna, salmon, yellowtail, salmon. So I get my wasabi, put it in, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's my, it, it's a, for me it's a science because I really had to learn it a certain way. And I got taught by this, I say master sushi chef. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all a certain way. Um, it was before. I worked with a master chef before I owned own my own restaurant. Right. Did, did you always know you wanted to own your own restaurant? No. <laughs> I did not. How did that come about? Okay. Well, I knew I wanted a restaurant. Okay. And, um, I mean, I, I started my restaurant career like in 1977. Okay. Maybe 1976. I worked at Horatio's, where Garrett used to be a corporate chef at. Horatio's, way back when, now it's called Kincaid's. I started off as a busboy, worked my way through as waiter, okay, and then went to bar back and ended up in the bar, and finally a bar manager. And it was so much fun. I was part of the party. It was a fun time. I was, uh, before that, I was going to engineering school with my dad, okay? And my dad has a, he was working he was an engineer working for this company, and I'd work with him every summer, every spring break, every winter break. And it just got old. I just said, you know what? I gotta do something else. So I went to the restaurant and I got the bug. Enjoyed working in restaurants. I worked in front of the house first, and then moved to the back of the house after I got tired of the front of the house. And then learned, learned how to make sushi, learned, catered with this awesome caterer in Aspen, Colorado. And she would teach me all kinds of different, different things, techniques, ingredients, and uh, a lot of recipes. So, you know, at one point, I wanted to have my own bar, okay? And that was a dream. I always have some kind of dream or goal in front. So I wanted to have my own bar. But after a while, it was like, hmm, I don't know if I want my own bar. I want my own restaurant. So. I partnered up with some people. You know, we had a restaurant in Mexico. You know, we sold that. We came to Kihei, had a restaurant in Kihei, and then it was five of us, and it just didn't work out that well. So then finally, I went with a partner to open Sansei, but all he wanted to do was work eight hours a day, five days a week. And after a while, it just didn't work out. He knew that, so he sold me his shares. So that's how I opened the first restaurant, Sansei. Okay? So, the Nigiri Sushi. It's just like that. All right. Well, thanks for having us and uh, come around, talk, you know, while we clean up. Okay, thank you very much.